Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm back with another video about how to turn rubbish into art. We bought a round of brie cheese recently, and when it was gone, I wondered if I could make a print from the piece of wood that I found inside the cheese packaging. The wood was very thin, so the first thing I needed to do was add some backing to it to stiffen it up and make it easier to carve. I used a recycled carton for this, but in retrospect, having gone through the process, I probably would have been better off using some non-coated cardboard instead. The juice carton didn't stick together particularly well with my PVA glue, and I had to be pretty careful as I was carving and printing to stop it from coming apart. I persevered with the juice carton though, and when the glue had dried for a while underneath some weights, I cut out the round carefully with a utility knife, and I painted over the whole surface of the wood with some shellac based drawing ink. There are a couple of reasons for doing this. The first is that it makes it nice and easy to see where you've cut away when you're carving your wood block, and the second is that the shellac in the drawing ink helps seal the surface of the wood to protect it from moisture when you're printing and cleaning up your block. When the layer of coloured ink was dry, I got out my opaque white ink and I painted an outline of my image directly onto the surface of the wood. I wanted this illustration to reference the material that I was making the artwork with, so I decided to draw a magnified illustration of the bacterial microbes that are used to make brie cheese. When I was ready to carve the block, I put down some non-slip matting and I carefully started carving with a small V-shaped woodcut tool. The first rule of woodblock carving is to always cut away from your hand, as it's very easy to slip and cut yourself, which is never ever fun. I like to use the non-slip matting to help with this because it's easy to pick the block up and move it around to carve in different directions. Because my particular piece of wood wasn't designed to be carved, it was a bit more brittle and difficult to cut than materials that are made specifically for printmaking. This is something that you'll always have to consider when you're using non-standard materials to make prints and other artworks. It's always a bit slower going and you have to be a bit more careful. In this instance, it was much easier for me to make a bunch of cuts in the same direction one after the other, and then rotate the block and cut the lines running in a different direction, and so on until I was done, stopping occasionally to clear away the small pieces of wood that I'd carved. I had a tiny emergency at one point where some of the wood at the very edge of the block splintered away in a big chunk, and I was able to catch this in time and repair it by sticking the wood back down with a little bit of glue.
When I was done with the carving, I sanded the surface lightly with some very fine sandpaper to get rid of any remaining wood splinters and little bits, and then I used a brush and a cloth to carefully clean the surface of the block. With the woodblock carving all finished and ready to print, it was time to make a registration sheet. You can do this by marking the corners of your paper with a pencil on some scrap newsprint, then ruling those lines with a marker so that the edges are clear and easy to see. Position your block on the page in the spot that you want to print it and trace around this with your marker as well. I also made a small mark on my registration sheet and a corresponding mark on the back of my plate so that it was very clear to me how I'd need to orient the block each time. This isn't always necessary but it can make things easier if you're printing a round block like I was here. When it's time to ink up your plate, roll out your ink on a piece of glass, perspex or scrap tile with a brayer. The ink that I'm using is an oil-based lithographic ink and I like this particular one for my woodcuts because it's nice and stiff and it's less likely to fill in all the grain on the wood. Any brand of lino cut or block printing ink will work though and you can mix in modifiers to make your ink stiffer or looser as you need to. I take out enough ink from my container for my addition, then I work it with an ink knife to make sure it's mixed well and at the right consistency, and then I take a little bit of this ink with my ink knife and I spread it out in a line, which I then roll out with the brayer. The ink should make a sort of a shik shik sound when it's rolled out to the right consistency, and as you're printing you can add more ink to this roll out as you need to. One of the things that I really like about woodblock prints is being able to see the wood grain in the image. So I'm really careful when I roll out the ink to do it progressively in thin layers, making sure there's enough on the block to make a good impression without losing all the fine details. I'll be using an etching press to print these woodblock prints and if you want to learn how to set an etching press for relief printing, have a look at my short how to set a printing press video. You can also print this type of block by hand with a spoon or a baron if you don't have access to a press, and I'll link another video showing how to do this in the description. I chose to print this particular block using my press because I'm using a thicker printmaking paper, and this gets better results when you print with a press. As you can see, I have my registration sheet set up underneath a sheet of acetate on my press bed so that I can line up the block and the paper the same way each time. Putting the registration sheet under a clear piece of plastic helps keep it in place and I can also wipe it clean easily between prints.
When you've finished printing your edition, leave the prints spread out in a safe place overnight to dry. I used to have a how to clean up section in every one of my printmaking videos and luckily for you I've also made a dedicated video showing how to do this. So when you're done printing, have a look at that video to find out how to best clean up your ink and tools. The next day when my prints were dry, I decided to hand colour some of them using watercolour paint. The paint that I'm using this time is my Kurotake Gansai Tambi set with a Japanese ink brush. These paints are very vibrant straight out of the pan without needing to add a lot of layers, and the pigment particles are quite large and they dry with really interesting grain patterns which is what I wanted for my reprints. I applied the watercolour by putting down a wash of water over the area that I wanted to colour, then dropping in different colours into the pool of water so that they'd bleed through the image in an organic way. While I finish up my painting, it seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can join it. Every little bit of support really does help me keep making these videos, and there are a bunch of different reward levels available, including some where you get an original digital artwork to download and print every month. The original artworks that I'm making here will also be for sale on my website, and if you'd like to buy a reproduction print, you can find them for sale in my Redbubble shop, and the links for these will all be in the description of this video. When my watercolours were dry, my prints had buckled a little bit, so I fixed this by laying them face down and spraying a fine mist of water over the back of each sheet of paper. After blotting away the excess water with some newsprint, I left the prints to dry overnight between a couple of sheets of clean newsprint underneath a stack of cardboard and weights. The next day when I unstacked them, they were dry and flat. And that's it. I hope you liked seeing me print these Brie woodcuts. I'd love to hear if you've ever used any unusual materials for making artwork. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. And if you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. I've listed all the materials that I used today in the description, and you'll also find links there for my website, my Patreon, my Facebook page, my Instagram, and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.